Tear with you today. We're stringing up leather britches, y'all. I do have a video um, from a couple years ago where I had already strung up leather britches. They were dry. We were cooking them. But we didn't actually go through the whole procedure of stringing them. And let me tell you, it's mind-blowing. This is my favorite way to preserve green beans because you don't really have to do much. You can get multiple people involved. It takes no time at all, and they are delicious. You talk to your nana, your papa, you'll probably find out they had leather britches or shucky beans. This is an 18th century or older um, method of preserving green beans, okay? And you're simply going to take basically needle and thread. Whatever you've got, the bigger the needle, the better, more of like your darning needle or whatnot. You're going to take some string. Some people use unwaxed dental floss. My store didn't have any. I thought that was really bizarre, but nonetheless, they want us to have waxy dental floss. But um, you can use kite string, whatever you've got, just simple string, and you're going to string these up. Now, the first thing you need to do is you clearly need to go out and pick you a mess of beans. And some of mine have gotten a little bit big simply because, well, I had a procedure done last week, so I didn't get to pick. But by the time that we get these done and they're strong and they actually drive and preserve over the next several months, they will shrink down substantially. You'll, you'll, you'll really be mind blown at, you know, this looks really huge right now. And then by the time Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatnot comes around, your green beans are going to be tiny, but they're going to be delicious. And they cook back up. They plump back up. So get your mess of beans, get your needle and thread. Let's make some leather bridges. All right, guys, to be honest with you, traditionally, people do this and preserve these with your pole beans. Any type of pole bean you like. You can use rattlesnake. You can use uh, trail tears. Those are really common. Um, you can do uh, Missouri wonders are fabulous. Kentucky wonders. Mine are Kentucky wonders. I do have October beans, Cherokee October beans from Nantahala growing right now, but they're not going to be ready until October. So... We're going to work with these right now. You can also work with bush beans. So just whatever you've got. If you like Roma 2s, my favorite beans, some of my favorite beans are Roma 2s because you don't have to snip the ends and string them. They're stringless. So those are very easy for this procedure. It takes that step out or to make dilly beans. But no brainer, you're simply going to, you got to string these beans. Now some of these are kind of long and big. So what I may do is break them in half. And that helps me string it a little bit further. So I may, some of these may actually be halfers. It just depends on the size of your bean or whatnot. So you can see these are, some of these are really big and at different phases. So the first thing that we're going to do is we gotta break beans, y'all. All right, guys, so I'm just simply breaking beans. This is really good for your kids to do. In fact, I'm only gonna do so much because my boys are gonna finish this for me. So that's the way I've already showed them. They were like, sure, no problem. So they need to learn, your kids need to learn. And this is a great project for your kids. Right now, it doesn't seem like much. They'll be excited come Thanksgiving or Christmas. My Nana always talks about, and I've said this before, my great-great-grandmother who I had till I was 16, um, she, loved leather britches and it was a big deal for them to have leather britches now they called them leather britches they didn't call them shucky things it's a big deal for them to have them and they would string them up and they would my nana said that you know after once you got into fall they would beg for them they would want to cook them and she'd say no 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 those are for christmas those are for christmas so they always had several things to look forward to on thanksgiving they would take beans excuse me tomatoes out of brown bags the final green tomatoes of the season, they would put in brown bags and uh, have them on Thanksgiving. They would, they would ripen in those bags. And uh, leather britches were always a tradition for Christmas Day. All right, guys, I got a good little mess here of beans. That's going to make a nice string of leather britches. No waste. I'm going to give all of that to my goats. That's a wonderful treat for your goats out there. They're going to eat it, gobble that right on up with their feed. They're going to love it. Got a bunch left and a whole bunch more to pick, but we're going to start here. So let's get started. Okay, so after you have your desired beans ready to go, you're simply going to take your needle and thread 
And again, you can make it as long as you want, okay? And you're gonna put it through right the middle. Do you see this right here? You're gonna go in through the middle of the bean. Woo, kinda like a, making like a little pinwheel or whatnot. And you're just gonna pull it through. Now, the bottom one or the first one, you're gonna want to take your string and wrap it around and tie it and knot it because that's gonna be your bottom base. So very simple to do. That's just with the first one, and from there, you'll just keep on stringing. Okay, right there, I simply just poked through, went around one time, tied it, made a knot, and snipped my end, and from there, I'm gonna continue to string down all the rest of my leather bridges. By the way, you wanna have a really nice place for these to hang. Some folks hang them in the kitchen. Um, some folks, old timey ways, would put them out in the porch. That's all they had. Um, you could put them in a pantry. You want it to be a cool, dark, dry place. Um, you know, you don't want any issues. And by the way, when I'm stringing them down, I'm going to show you, I don't want to pull them uh, all the way down tight. You want a little bit of space in between each bean, so that way you've got good airflow in between, so you don't have a mold issue or anything like that. So you don't want to tight it, you know, uh, pack it tight in there. So let's get stringing. Always make sure you're careful. You're not, you know, poking yourself in the finger. That's not the goal. <laughs> See, I'm just kind of, just sli lightly putting them in there, leaving a little bit of space in between. Now that's hard to see. It'll make more sense when we're done. Just putting them on there. You can sit and watch TV, talk on the phone, or have your children do it. Because kids these days, they need to learn. Oh my God. It's that simple, strung up, ready to go. You can see there's some spacing in between some of them. Might want to put a little bit more space in between just to make sure. It's going to be good come Christmas time, right? Get the kids involved. This is what Granny did. Before any of us were canning, this is how she did it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.